Yeah, the the entitlement of okay, you want to meet? Well, here's the date and time we're gonna meet. And I'll just assume, even though yeah. you're running a business, you're that you're free. you're gonna make sure that you're available. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a needless power play, I would say. I was a teacher for 20 years. We're just sitting in the studio, bro. I was going to pull out my music. Really. No, don't pull out your music. There, there will be none of that. I was going to pull out Fat Boys. No, we're not doing that. Okay. Steven Spence, Project Map It. How you doing, man? Mike Stearns, Send Digital. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yep. friend. You see, we did a jersey swap. We're going to do a little signing afterwards. You know, something light. Let's hold it up. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do that, and it's going to be great. Thank you for coming. I'm very excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Yeah. Embrace you with open arms. I mean, you get the concierge white glove service like all of our clients, right? As a partner, yep. we come pick you up from the airport, yep. bring you in. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. So uh, shout out to Roofer. Uh, you know, if you're looking for clean and pristine proposals, roof measurements, instant quotes, like anything you can to make your business better, even a CRM, hit up the team at Roofer. Down in the description, there's going to be a link. You click it, you let them know I sent you. You'll be happy you did. Won't they? We Yeah, we love Roofer. We're partnered with Roofer. Yeah. We don't have many partners. Uh, we have a couple. We have Project Map It. Uh, we have Roofer. Uh, and uh, I, I see that like a lot of companies, it's, it's kind of just a, a money grab, right? Like, hey, sponsor this and we'll do this and we'll promote you. And I have a hard time doing that because I want to be aligned ethically as far as efficacy of whatever it is I'm sponsoring. I want to know that it works. I want to know that they're going to provide the same type of experience for my customers that Ascend aims to provide every one of our customers. So, so you know what, with that, we have, I think we're, I think we have like 13 partners of which we really work with probably six of them, like hardcore. And part of that's just our bandwidth. We're a small company, yep. right? So we don't, I don't, we, we now, I am now, able to utilize my time a little bit more to work with our sure. partners. However, with what you just said, we do not do any kind of a rub share with any of our partners. Mm -hmm. We co-market, we send customers to people. We partner with people that we know that are either going to help our contractors uh, leverage and use project map easier, like certainty, ABC supply, SRS distribution, that all just helps the contractor. Uh, and then we have partners like you, you know, you're our go-to website, full on marketing agency that we send people to. Uh, but yeah, no rev shares. I, I agree with you. It just gets muddy when yeah. you start saying, Hey, I'll give you X amount. If you send me referrals and crap like that, I don't like it. Yeah. I appreciate that. What, uh, have you talked to any of the customers that have had us do any work for them? Uh, yeah. Responsive roofing. Ron Hilliard is a stud. I love the guy ever yeah. since I met him the very first time on our first demo call. Uh, Ron, Ron loves you guys. I was just checking out the website before we started this and, and that's a slick looking website, man. We aim to please. You're doing good stuff. We try but, our best. But, which is why, right. I've been through, I think three or four other marketing agencies in my six years. And and when I met you, however many years ago now, two, yeah, three, it's been a couple of years, two or three years, uh, at dinner with TC backer. And, uh, we were talking about acquired taste, but once you acquire it, you can't get rid of it. Look, folks, I'm not for everyone, okay? I, I attract <laughs> some, I repel others, and you know what? I'm okay with it. I used to try to please everyone, and then I said, fuck it. Are we allowed to talk about this? Yeah. Yeah, so like we had dinner with TC Backer. You mm -hmm. remember that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and and the first five minutes, you were giving it to the the lady waitress, and I was, I was, and I was sitting pretty much right across from you, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out. It was the first time I really met you. Like, is this guy like just an asshole or is he joking? And then even throughout the dinner, like the acquired tastes happened throughout the dinner. Like at the beginning, I was kind of like, what, what's going on with Mike? Everything. I, I can't tell if he's joking or not. And then by the end, I'm like, this dude is as authentic and genuine as you can get. Yeah. And I think, I think she had a similar learning curve. Like I wasn't being explicitly an asshole, Correct. but I have a dry sense of humor. You do. Um, and I find it fun. Okay. And yes, some people do, some people don't, but we left our nice tip. She was smiling. We did. Yeah. And, uh, we had good food. Mm -hmm. The service was good. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, it was funny because in that meeting we had talked a few months before that <laughs> I'm big on accountability. Core value. Number one is accountability at Ascend. And, uh, <laughs> 
you know, Stephen, Steve and I were, we were exchanging a conversation and it we was had a, good, a screen share. We, so we had had a screen share a few months earlier and Steve said, now that I met you and you know, now that we're able to finally speak. And I was like, well, hold on a second. I was like, you know, we, we talked before, uh, we, we talked in depth before on a screen share. He's like, Oh yeah. And I'm like, I don't think, I think I reached out to you and like, we never then reconvened. Like what happened? He's like, <laughs> Oh man. And we started to, and we talked through it because communication is super important. Okay. I was, no, no excuse. You, what Mike said, what you said right there is 100% truth. Uh, I did forget that we had a screen share, it's all but good. I was also going through a very dark time in my life when we had that screen share. And, uh, you know, I was empathetic to that. I think yeah, you, you were, know, you, you were. know, it's, uh, and you're a friend of mine. I, I think, I think I it's important. It. I think it's important for, you know, any, any healthy relationship that has any chance of sustaining the test of time at the foundational level you know, everybody expects something from somebody, yeah. right? And what those expectations are, they vary from relationship to relationship. If you think about with a casual friend, with a partner in life, with a, with a partner in business, yeah. with employer, employee, like there's always like these built in expectations. And like, I think the more explicit they are and the more accountability there are to those expectations, the better the likelihood that relationship has of su succeeding over time. Can I, can I tell, I, I actually want to speak to that, but before I do, I have something props here. Um, I only have it. one, but I do have a swim cap that you're more than welcome to wear. So if you want to wear it or I can wear it. Um, and then I also have some swim goggles and I, I made sure to get my son's red ones because it matches ascend. So last time we spoke, what was the thing? One of us or both of us had to wear a swim cap. My kids would not give me two swim caps. Okay. So would you like to wear it since it's your show or would that, would that make your hair look bad? Cause my hair I mean, always looks bad. It might, it might fuck up my hair, but you know, I, I've been dying to drop the line. I think it's from gladiator. Are you not entertained? Yeah. And I think this would be the perfect opportunity to do that. Okay. There you go. I'll tell you what, <laughs> since you're doing that, I'll do this at least for a little bit until Christian says, Steve, you look like an idiot. You need to take this off. Now, full disclosure, I've never put on a swim cap before. Yeah, well, I haven't either. So you're going to be the first. Aren't you a swimmer? No. no. I, I'm a good runner. I was a lacrosse player. Lacrosse, that's right. I'm a lacrosse guy. Okay. So I think they start at the front like yeah, that, yeah. and they just pull it all the way back. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, yeah, you rock it much better than I do. Ha. How's it feel? You don't have to go over your ears, but swimmers do. You look, you look like Did, not over the ears. No, you can hold it up. What, what do you I do? just want to make like sure this? you can hear me. Something like this. Are we good? And we're back. So back to what you were saying uh, about build. You took it off. Well, yeah, it was just yeah. Oh well, I'll wear it the whole time. You said I wear, wear it the whole time. time. All right, we'll throw it on. Would that be time. bad for the podcast? Are those prescription? Those glasses? Those are. Those are. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I could throw on the red glasses to add some flair. But oh, do you want to wear the goggles? No, the goggles wouldn't look good. So um, I got a message from, see, you did it much better than I do. I don't even know how to do it. I got a message from a guy. I got a message from a guy on LinkedIn. We'll just, I, I don't need to say names. And, and, um, that's, I mean, that's nice. Does it look good? Yeah. yeah. All right. How's my hair, Christian? Yours looks good. Uh, I have so, to so I got a, I got a message from a gentleman at, what are you laughing at, man? You told me I had to wear it the whole yeah, listen, podcast. Hey, I'll take it off soon. I love it. Got a message from this guy. Uh, you were talking about building relationships with new new partners and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, got a message said, hey, you know, I listened to your podcast with Leap, and I really liked it. <clears throat> in fact, funny enough, I heard you mention Engage, which is another great partner of ours. And mm -hmm. um, we just pushed Engage out to our dealer network, and I would love to talk to you. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That was another LinkedIn guy. Two messages. So last week, this gentleman text, this guy messaged me on LinkedIn and basically said, hey, we have this program that does roof measurements. Would love to chat with you. And I said, sure, I'm always up for a discovery call. I messaged him back. I said, here's my, here's my email address. Here's my phone number. Feel free to give me a call. And in my inbox, like five minutes later, I got a calendar invite for a day. Like a, he picked a day. I didn't like that. And because he's assuming, I said, give me a call or whatever. It screams entitlement. It does. Like, like, hey, here's the day. You didn't ask me like, hey, when are you free? You know, it's just, that was the first, that was the first kind of interaction I had with him yeah. beyond the messaging in LinkedIn. And so I canceled it. And I just, I emailed back, said, sorry, I can't make it that day. And so instead of him saying, hey, and he, and he called me Spencer too, 
by the way. My name is Steve Spence, not Spencer. Um, it's your new nickname, Spencer? No, no, oh, yeah. not at all. I hate it. Spen so you're probably a little too young. You won't give me your age, but Spencer for Hire was a big show back when I was younger, and people would call me Spencer, and I hated it. Got it. So he's been calling me Spencer this whole time, too. <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, dude, you are, you are starting off on the wrong foot. Like, yeah. you want to form a relationship with me. You can't even say my name right. <laughs> and secondly, you keep scheduling these meetings, and I canceled the meeting. I got a, there were, The meeting was supposedly yesterday, and I canceled it. He emailed me yesterday. Hey, sorry, I can't make the meeting in time. I rescheduled it. He didn't even see that I canceled the meeting. Good guy. So that guy is not ever going to get any of my conversation business or yeah. discovery call again. Sure. Yeah, the, the entitlement of, okay, you want to meet? Well, here's the date and time we're going to meet. I'll just assume, even though yeah. you're running a business, you're that you're, you're going to make sure that you're available. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a needless power play, I would say. I was a teacher for 20 years mm -hmm. and I got to be honest with you, like names were very important to me. Yeah. We had a, we had a, a young lady from Africa, didn't speak a lick of English, come into my math class one day and on the paper, it said her name, Olawamayoa was her name, but it was hard to en enunciate. And I asked her, I said, how do you say your name? She goes, Mayoa for short. Yeah. I said, how do you say the whole, whole name? I mean, she didn't even understand what I was saying. She finally, I think understood. And she said, Ola, Olawa Mayoa. And so I literally spent like the rest of that class uh, just walking around in, in my head, quietly saying, Olawa Mayoa, Olawa Mayoa, Olawa Mayoa, because names are important. Yeah. I was called Stephanie by teachers when I was in school because my name is spelled with a PH. Like, come on, man. Names are important. And when I'm on calls all the time, the first thing I say is, I don't, I don't know how to enunciate your name. I want to make sure I'm saying your name right. Yeah. And people appreciate that, man. Relationships. The details matter. Devil's the in the details. details matter. Yeah. I am a big believer in that. Small details can make a big difference yep. in anything. Yep. You know, I want, I got a message. I had reached out to David Carroll, Dope Marketing. And that's my guy, by the way. David At the Carroll. time, we hadn't had much of a relationship. I was like, okay. hey, I was interested in, you know, doing some of these mailers or whatever. And he responded with a calendar link. So when we got to talk and I was like... I was like, yeah, a little bit of a power play. You just send a Cali link. You don't acknowledge the message. Just yeah. drop a Cali link. And I think that's more of a me thing, right? I think that's me being um, an so. opportunity for me to grow maybe where it's like, you know, you're saying you want to, you want to talk about something. Somebody's sending you a link to schedule some time. Like that's fair. The other side of me is like, you know, Hey, how's it going? So we talked about it. We communicated and he's like, never even thought of it like that. Communication. I don't think it's a mic thing. I think, I think that is a, I think the way you felt about it is the way everybody should feel about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it's but also- I also think it's great that you talked to him about it and he acknowledged it. Like, yeah, and that's the thing, like, especially in business, there's so many moving parts. Everyone's so busy, like within, you know, my job, my team's job yep. and everything like that and your roofing company and your, your admins and your product fulfillment and right. project managers. There's so much stuff going on that- without proper context, like we can't just assume what people are thinking. We can't assume that like, Hey, this dude is being malicious or trying to power play me. Cause he just responded with a Calendly, right? Like yeah. David was probably busy as fuck. Cause he runs a very successful so company. There's a lot of things going on. And it's like, let me just make sure I get this link out. Whereas like me, I'm like, okay, maybe you're being sensitive. Right. And we don't know it. I was stuck in traffic yesterday and, uh, there's this woman, she's, you know, she's going like 20 miles an hour and the speed limit's like 35 and, you know, Everett, big Everett, six months, 20 pounds. He's teething. He's in the backseat. He is screaming and crying. And in the moment I became furious that this lady's driving so slow because all I want to do is get my son home, maybe get him some Tylenol, you know, as a parent, I don't love my son, you know, in the back sounding like he's in anguish. Right. right. So I, you know, my na my initial response was like, can you just fucking go lady? And I wanted to like blow the horn, but then I thought about it and like, she doesn't know. Yeah. She doesn't know that I've got a screaming six month old in the back of the car. Right. She's, you know, for whatever reason, she's going a little bit slow and it's not that big of a deal at the end of the day. And she's old. She may have been old. She was driving slow. I, I don't know that she was old or not. I didn't look, okay. um, but I was tr just trying to work on being situationally aware and like not being so triggered by things yeah. that are inconsequential in life. I agree with that. That's, I that's my that. opportunity for growth. And I got to focus on it every single day because you know, some things they, they just really fucking strike a nerve. Oh, well, I also just drove from the airport with you. So I am fully aware of how you drive and driving 20 miles per hour. Is not okay. Well, we're going to cut that. No, I'm just kidding. You could leave it. <laughs> it was a fun ride though. 
It was. There, there's nobody that takes their job more seriously and works harder than the folks that are sitting waiting at the arrivals gate. Uh, and when you're pulling up and you're, you're trying to pick someone up from the airport, they are the most zealous individuals rigid on process. I mean, as soon as they see that you pull up, they come tap on your window. You can't be here. And now you've got to justify that this guy's literally walking through the door and it's okay. Like, no, they have to be outside. You have to do a lap. It's crazy. They they do a good job though. Yeah. They're doing their job and they're doing it well. And for that, I appreciate that. And I like that you just use the word process. I mean, I think that's important. I've never heard you use that word before. Yeah, it's something new I learned. I saw it on TikTok. So yeah, <laughs> I learned that processes are important. And in the absence of processes, shit doesn't get done. Uh, but, you know, I also find having process isn't enough, right? A lot of the times people fall into a few different buckets and it causes points of friction and breakdown uh, within their business. And, you know, they don't have processes, right? That's the first problem. Or they have processes. They're just not shitty good. processes. They're not, they're not the right processes for where they're at. Or nobody's managing and holding accountable their team to those processes, right? Like, which you could have the best processes for the, you know, the most contextually relevant processes for where you're at in business. But if nobody's making sure that people are following those processes, what the fuck are we doing? Right? Or, and, or, as people grow, the need for iteration or changes to those processes typically come into play. And, you know, we have processes that don't match our growth. They were built when we were at 2 million. Now we're at nine and they have to be revisited to make sure that consistently we're functioning in a way that's going to deliver the optimal customer experience, deliver the least amount of friction to our team. They need to evolve and get shit done so that our customers are happy. Our employees are happy. Um, because if that happens, You'll have lower churn, higher retention of your employees. You'll have better reviews, right? Yep. Um, and I, th- I think that's often overlooked is like these small breakdowns that happen in your business, whether you're at a half million, a million, two million, whatever is the symptom is like someone being unhappy or production taking longer, even if the customer does, isn't unhappy with it. Like there's, there's glaring issues, symptoms of these issues, but the issue is the breakdowns and those breakdowns become disproportionately more impactful as you scale. Right. Um, and cause a lot of people, a lot of headache and a lot of heartache. And the more people are subjected to that on the employee side, the less they're going to enjoy doing their job. I can talk to that. I, I need to take this off. Can I take this yeah, off? Yeah. This thing's giving me a freaking headache. <laughs> I don't know how my children do it. So um, I, I'm in exactly those those shoes. I'm 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 walking in those shoes right now, right? We're a small we were a smaller company for the first three years. We were talking about humble beginnings and we can get into that if you want. We're but, going to. But um we've been growing, right, quite a bit over the last year and a half. And before it was just me. Yeah. And then I had me and Perla. And I was able to train Perla slowly enough because business wasn't coming in so fast that, <coughs> right? So Perla, Perla is like me. She knows everything about the company. But then we started hiring. We have, we've hired three or four cents, four cents. And what we recognized quickly was, A, we're not leveraging our CRM the way we could with automations and efficiencies and stuff like that. Uh, so I spent, I mean, it took me a good three months to figure out how to use HubSpot the best way. And we finally dialed it in and we're still dialing it in right now, but we're much better and then the other thing I, I learned is I, I didn't know how to, I knew how to do everything, but when we hired a new customer success manager, for example, that customer success manager had to be trained. And so we didn't have any like playbook to train them. So we've built all that out. So we are finally at a point where our processes are at least at the scalability where we are right now, but we might have to hire three or four more people in the next month. Are we going to be able to evolve those processes? We will a lot more efficiently than before because we've put some stuff into place. Yeah. I I mean, I've dealt with a lot of that and it's an ongoing process, right? Uh, You've got a lot to focus on when you're running a business, a lot of things that you saw coming probably many more that you didn't see coming. Yep. My biggest challenge, and I talked about this, I was in Detroit with Eric Reno and we shot some content at MGM on draft day a couple weeks ago, but my biggest thing was getting the shit out of my head onto paper, right? So then you can look at it, you can make, you can organize it in a way that makes sense to somebody that's never worked in your business before, right? It's a new hire, day one. This is what you should expect coming in as far as your roles and responsibilities. And this is exactly how you execute that. It, it It's a transparent start, which makes it a lot easier for them to become... 
integrated with the team and to do their job effectively and, and just have a better baseline yeah. starting point. Like for us, we have, we have five in the States and two onboarding or two people that help us onboard that are in Argentina yeah. and our entire team is great, but we started over the last three months, affectionately calling it superpowers. Like what is your superpower? Yeah. Like I was a teacher for 20 years. So for me, to build out a nice engaged demo deck that we use as a sales deck is pretty easy for me because I was a teacher. I know yeah. kind of how people work, how minds work, how people learn and visualize and stuff. Um, but funny enough, it's, it's not funny. Uh, but one of our new employees, he started in December, Pat Martinick, he was a kid I used to coach in lacrosse. He was the hardest worker back then on my team. I coached him for six years. He's one of the hardest workers right here. Project map it now he's proven himself. Uh, Pat has extreme dyslexia. I did not know that when I hired him, not that that would make a difference, yeah. but you know, I quickly started realizing like his emails were pretty, were, he was struggling with getting his words on paper or on emails to customers and his job was customer success. So he had to be able to communicate effectively with, with our customers. Long story short, people with dyslexia might have problems processing numbers and, and letters and writing and reading and stuff like that. But you know what they're great at? They are amazing at, processes, yeah, everything else. So like when we're talking about how to build these processes into our, into our, into our company, what's the best way to onboard a customer? What are the best strategies when you're selling and things like that? When we have our weekly meetings and I have a question that I put to the team, like, Hey, this isn't working. How can we make it work better? Guess who always has the right answer? Pat Martinick. Like that's that dude's superpower. He can't process letters and numbers. They mix up and, and he's not the best writer. He uses Grammarly to help kind of combat that, which was great. He figured that out on his own. Um, but man, that, that dude's superpower is everything else. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, I'm glad he's making it work. I mean, I, you know, you confusing, like that's gotta be challenging for yeah. him. And, but he's using, he's proactively using tools to help minimize the impact that that would potentially have on him professionally. Right. Yeah. Every disability, there's some stronger ability. Yeah. I have, I have ADHD. Yeah. I mean, I, I was fed Ritalin for like 10 years when I was yeah. a kid that became problematic before I started using like calendar and technology to hedge against that. Like if I had to operate based off of like a notepad with dates and times, I would miss every fucking meeting with you guys that, you know, we're supposed to have. So I'm grateful that we have things like technology, a Google calendar reminders, CRM to where I can categorize my life in a way where some of my shortcomings don't become the shortcoming of one of my clients campaigns. Right. Yeah. Um, And to your point where it's like a Cape and a kryptonite, that's like the kryptonite side. The cape side is, I mean, bro, I, I mean, I'm productive. Yeah. I mean, I'm up get early shit getting shit done, yeah. getting shit knocked out. And I get a lot of stuff accomplished. Now, with that being said, I might do 79 things in a day and maybe 14 of them are left at 80% because I'm, I get distracted. Right. Yeah. So I have a system as far as like how I'm opening up tabs on browsers and things to do a recap to be like, okay, did everything get did done? Get the, you know, so done correctly. I'm, uh, yeah, I tell people, I'm like, I'm broken, you know, so I'm just playing my sli- slice in life. When I'm golfing, I'm slicing in life. I'm slicing and I'm not fixing the mechanics of it, but I'm addressing the symptoms. So I'm just going to aim left because I know yeah. the ball's coming back. Right. And if I aim left, it's going to land in the fairway. Sure. I'm going to lose 30 yards on my drive. I'm okay with that. I know that I'm not hitting out of behind a fucking tree. Dude, you're so, you're such a, you're such a good wordsmith, man. That was well said, but thanks. thanks. That analogy is great. By the way, I suck I at golf. And even when I try to play my slice on the golf course, I fuck it up. But my, it's working better in life than on the golf my course. My grandfather always said, slow backswing, you'll hit it straight every time. So I don't hit it far, but I hit it straight yeah. most of the time. Well, one of these times we'll have to go play some golf. Yeah. Basketball first. Steven challenged me to a basketball game. So. I didn't challenge. I just thought it'd be good content. It'd be funny. Get Christian out there to videotape you beat my ass 15 so, so we got some content of picking him up at the airport, driving in. We had a conversation. <laughs> now we're in the studio, as you heard from Schoolboy Q in the intro. I'm just sitting in my studio. Anyhow, we're going to go to the basketball court after. and we're, Maybe we'll play some pig. Maybe we'll play some 21. Maybe just one verse one. Um, call your own fouls. Yeah, one v one, and I will foul. I don't because I. He's a hack, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Hack. He's oh. a hack. That's okay. So we're gonna. I'm gonna. You've never seen a guy who's five foot eight work the post like me. I'm telling you right now. So more awesome content coming hey, in that regard. I'm five six and three quarters. I've shrunk a half inch, and yep. I work the post pretty well too. So I mean, 
these are words at this point. We're gonna have we're gonna have actual data and, and actual oh, video to go off of. We're gonna have shot percentages taken versus made. Oh hell no. We're, we're gonna have well, yeah, pain sure. points. We're gonna we're gonna see who's gonna be dominant in the post. Uh, I, w- I would actually like to do like a charity basketball thing. So at RoofCon a few years back, shout out to my guy, Tim Brown. I played against him. I think Connor Rodich. I got thrown onto like a, a team that they had for, it was like a roofers and recovery type deal. Heck yeah. And I got to tell you, I'm not great at basketball, but I balled out that day. I mean, I was hitting the deep three, like nobody's business. It was a lot of fun. And I think that, you know, if we get a bunch of people from the industry to put together an event, that would be fun. Contribute some money. And, you know, let's all come to a consensus on where we could donate some money to and have a good time. Yeah, I like it. I think it builds the, the, the fibers of the community, you know, stronger. And uh, we help some people along the way. Yeah. And there'll be it. a lot of good content out of it. It would be a lot of funny content, I think, out of it. Getting a bunch of contractors together to uh, play some basketball, full court basketball. I mean, back, you know, maybe a year, year and a half ago, Anthony Markraff and I, we were on a podcast. He, he has clear cut exteriors out of... Uh, out of Minnesota, shout out to my guy Anthony. Yeah, I said Dimitri and Tim Brown. It's an open invite. Like you want the smoke, we'll pull up. I'll pull up to Minnesota. My guy Anthony and I, we could we could go against the Minnesota boys, see what's what on the court. I think it would be a lot of fun. And you know, we could do a friendly wager that we donate to to a yeah. charity of the choosing of the winning team, right? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That offer still stands. Oh, so you guys never played it? We never played. I thought you were going to say. I never heard back. Maybe they were scared. They weren't scared. I mean, I'm five foot nothing. Come on. Not, if you're five foot nothing, I'm five foot negative nothing. <laughs> is, is that a double negative? So it means I you're five foot is. something? Yeah. You're five foot something. I'm five foot something. Look at you. But and, I'm shrinking. And you t- you're telling me I'm the wordsmith. You're I'm shrinking. You're a savvy fella right here. Savvy fella. So we mentioned humble beginnings. What I mean, what was the inspiration for Project Map? Where did it start? How did it start? I mean, give it to me. Give it to me. Um. Yeah, pretty humble. So I was a special education teacher for 20 years, taught math, and uh, coached lacrosse. I'm a big lacrosse guy. I live in Maryland. So, um, you know, that's a big hotbed for lacrosse. So I was the high school lacrosse coach for 15 years at the the high school. I taught at for 15 of those 20 years. Um, One of the the alumni of the guys that I coached, Matt, uh, that I coached for four years, saw me 10 years later. Um, and said, coach, we need to get together and I need to talk to you about a new software that I've built. I think you'd be great. So we met for about three months on and off and he hired me. So I was the first ever employee at Project Map It. I left a 20 year teaching career, making about 90,000. I was getting my, I got my certification for, to become an administrator. So the, the, literally my 21st year, I was hoping to become a principal assistant principal probably to start. And then as it usually takes you. If I was good enough at that, maybe I'd become principal. And then superintendent? No. But uh, aim for stars, guys. If you, the hit the, stars, if you hit the if moon, you miss, it's fun. You're still high. Yeah. 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 Um, I might have fucked that saying up, but it's all good. It's Anyhow. Okay. So, I, so I left a 20 year teaching career. And it wasn't long after I started at Project Map It that we realized quickly that at that point in time, there weren't thousands of people signing up like we thought there would be. Yeah. So um, the owner, Matt, he, he owns a roofing company, which was his inspiration, built a great product. Yeah. Uh, he, he continued on with his roofing company and I was kind of left <laughs> sort of stranded. Yeah. A guy that taught 20 years of, of math to high school students, all of a sudden in this world of, of contractors, not knowing a lick of like what certainty to own score all these different things were uh, and trying to grow the company. So I had about $125,000 saved up in my 401k. Uh, And then over the course of three years, that was pretty much depleted. My first year salary at Project Map, I think was $37,000. So I sat at my house and worked my ass off and and tried to get one customer at a time. And for many months, I was paying myself $3,000 a month. And then it became $5,000. And then we're at a point now where the company is sustainable. We have some really big partnerships People are reaching out to me instead of me begging other people to help bring leads in for us. So mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a, you know, I always say, uh, I don't know, there's definitely sayings for humble beginnings, but you know, I've just come from the old school cloth of working really hard. Yeah. I think there's no one in, in our company or no one that knows me that would say Steve doesn't work hard. Yeah. So I worked hard, worked many, many hours, probably at the beginning 
probably 70, 80 hours a week. Now it's probably down to 60, 70. I work on weekends and stuff, but uh, we're sustainable. We're growing. We have partnerships that are going to probably help us exponentially grow here in the next few months. And life is good. I love that. I mean, it had to be nerve wracking more so for you than Matt. Uh, you know, Matt knew he had a fallback plan, right? You could just get right back in the roofing. Company. He has a great roofing company right? still, I think. Whereas, you know, you leave a 20 year career. Uh, I'm assuming based on the prerequisite to become, you know, certified and, and have a degree to be able to teach yeah. high school math. Right. Uh, I would assume you feel a lot more vulnerable because if it doesn't work out, your employability is a lot more challenge. The road to that is more challenging than just hopping yeah. back into your I, roofing business. I did not want to go back into teaching at all. So, I mean, how come? I? Huh? How come? I was, I loved teaching when you're in the classroom, mm -hmm. when I was the sage on the stage, I was in front of the kids selling curriculum. That's why I'm a good sales guy, right? Like I sold curriculum to high school kids for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, my last five years, I was um, a department chair and I was not in the classroom. And, you know, I didn't handle things super well as a leader of that department at yeah. the beginning. I jumped right in and started trying to make changes, which was a learning lesson on my end. I rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And uh, honestly, that that helped me at least get a taste of what a pseudo admin position would be. And it's just kind of thankless, man. I, I just feel like no matter what you do as an administrator, since that was my path, teachers weren't going to really like you. And I, yeah. and I have a personality that I, I don't like it when people don't like me. Mm. Like I, I need affirmation. I don't anymore. I've worked a lot of, a lot on that with my therapist over the last two years. <laughs> so I, say, I know a guy you could talk no, to. I talk to him every Friday. In fact, t t tomorrow I've got my, my one hour appointment, but point being is I just realized it wasn't for me. And when I left, I, I did 20 years, 15 in the classroom. And I loved those 15 years. The last five years was a great learning experience. And I definitely had great memories, but yeah, no, I, I don't, I didn't want to go back into teaching. And there were certainly multiple times that people <coughs> came to me and said, we're going to close down project map. And, and I had to beg them. No, like if he closed down project map it in that first year, uh, I wouldn't have had a job, you know, now if project map, it closed, which it won't, don't worry everybody. But if it closed, I mean, I have, I think I have other opportunities because I've made a, a name in, in the industry. Yeah. So I'm not as concerned obviously now, but we're sustainable in the, in the company's growing. So I'm, I'm, I'm just really proud of that, right? Like my second career, I'm really proud to know that I, along with the team that I I'm closely working with right now, we're growing and, and making, making strides. So it's fun to be a part of that. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think there's something to be said about the baptism by fire approach, right? Being thrown into something that you have not much familiarity with at all, or in, not, in essence, completely ignorant to, right? Totally. 100%. I don't mean ignorant to be like a, a term that denigrates Steven, right? Like no, the, I was very ignorance ignorant. is just, you don't know, right? I was 100% ignorant. So you sure. come into the situation and, you know, I mean, the most dangerous man is the one with nothing to lose, right? That was me you're in there and you're like, oh, we got to fucking make this work. Yeah. Right. So we're going to scratch and claw Christian cue the Al Pacino speech from any given Sunday halftime when he talks to his team, you don't have to cue it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what that, that, I mean, that is a speech. Yeah. You know, that, that few minutes that he talks about, uh, are you familiar with it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We scratch and we claw for that inch <laughs> bad impression, but go check it out. You, you could drop a link in the description. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's remarkable. I mean, even as early as a, a year and a half ago, I mean, it was when Pearl and I were just working together, the two of us, it was like, hey, Pearl, you need to sell two more subscriptions or we need to sell two more subscriptions to pay the bills. Yeah. Um, we're not like that anymore. That's so good. We've got reserve money in the account and life is good. I love that for you. Yeah. Thank you. So what's the growth plan? Are you guys going to be marketing? Are you going to be focusing on acquiring customers by directly marketing and advertising to the roofers or contractors? Are you guys really leaning in on the partnership side? Is it a blended approach? Like, what does that look like? It's a blended approach. We certainly have only relied on partners and cold emails and stuff like that. You know, yeah. we've got about 6,000 people in our database and we send out, you know, cold email campaigns, which brings in some good business, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, we've locked in the cold email system pretty good. We use Crossbeam with our partners, which is a way just to see mutual mutual companies that that work with us or our prospects of each. So that helps. We, we've we started over the last three months to try to do paid ads and stuff like that. So we are 
We're rebuilding our website now. It should be launched within the next 30 days. Um, we're Who's building it? So one of, <laughs> good question. Ascend uh -huh. Digital. Now, um, one of the owners of Project Map, it, we're a partnership of five. He is a marketing guy and he's branched off a little bit um, from his. So he, him and his partner, Callie, are building it. So shout out to Ryan and Callie. So we're actually building it right into HubSpot, which is our CRM. Yeah. We're just trying to get everything in one spot. So we yeah. can, like the analytics are there. So, you know, true, so what is it? One, a one truth source. What's it called? A single source of truth, single source. Okay. So everything in HubSpot. Um, so marketing's going there. We just hired a new social media person um, that's going to be doing that for us. So that's going to be pretty nice. We're going to be posting five days a week doing some video editing and stuff like that. So we're hoping to use social media as a platform to, to gain leads as well. So we are going after our own leads now. So it will be a hybrid in the past. It's been more cold emails and calls slash partnerships. Dude, I think the relationship slash partnership route is like for our customers, the most underutilized and undervalued component of running a business. You know, if you think about it, like it doesn't take much for roofing contractors, there's so many other different contractors that you can refer business with. You guys are all selling the same people, yeah. maybe at different times. Yeah. Like if somebody's, you know, furnace takes a shit. If you have an alliance with that HVAC company and they notice there's a couple of shingles in the yard or there's yeah. a few shingles missing on the roof, it's an easy conversation because they've already garnered their trust to say, Hey, we've got a great company. They're, they're very, yep. they're authentic. They're ethical. Have them come take a look at this. This is probably why you'd want them to come take a look. Uh, and just being focused and, and locked in on building and developing those relationships consistently over time and developing new ones. It could be such a great source for leads for a roofing company. And a lot of, a lot of guys don't do it. Some of the, you know, some will do it. Um, some do it with just like property management companies because they've got like the complexes, the apartments, things like that. But uh, may, having those strategic relationships with industry adjacent verticals, I guess uh, is could be so powerful. And like, like you said, you've leaned into that and it's been very fruitful for you. It's it's, helped. It helps with any business. I don't care if you own a fucking salon, you own a roofing company, a marketing agency. Well, you, you sent us to companies and literally I didn't, we, I didn't even have to demo them. It was like a text message and a five minute phone call. They're like, yeah, sign me up. If Mike, Mike Stern says I need project map it, I need project map it. And we, and we have those, you know, I think, you know, we have, per, we have very close relationships with all of our customers. I feel like we do a really good job with customer service. We check in on them. They know that they can call or text me anytime, even on the weekend, and I'll probably respond. Um, so there is that, but you know, we also have under a thousand customers, whereas some of these huge industry leaders that are in the software world that we're partnered with, you know, they don't, they have thousands and thousands. So their bandwidth is a little harder to be like, yeah, let me introduce you to Steve Spence. But I do think it is underutilized. And honestly, it's been the main reason we've grown is because of, we don't underutilize it. Yeah. We like, I don't know if it's that we pride ourselves on our tight relationships with our core partners, or if it's just, that's the only, we haven't had paid ads yet or anything yeah. like that. So it's all I could lean on anyway. Well, it's, it directly affects, especially for like our shared customers, it affects their profitability, right? Because if you're, if you're having to spend money instead of time, yeah, like there's a cost per acquired job and that directly impacts what you're going to make from that job. Whereas right. if you know, you do five jobs from Google ads or you do five jobs from a referral partner, there's significantly more profit when you're not paying out correct $200 a lead to Google ads. Yes, sir. And you know, if you can build a business where you've accomplished everything you want, you know, you can provide for your family, you can do everything that you need in life and you don't have to spend money on Google ads or marketing, like do that. Like it's all good. Like, in, I and like, I, say that I encourage I like people it. to do that. Right. Yeah. And now I always say, I'm like, I'm the fat kid, right. That always ran with a garbage bag to make weight on Saturdays for football. So like, I like cookies and I think of lead sources and opportunities as cookie jars. Right. So like referral relationships is one of them. Google ads is another one, SEO, Facebook yeah. trade shows, right? Like, like our customers, roofers have all these different opportunities. Go with the ones that make the most financial sense for you as far as keeping your company profitable while accomplishing the growth that you want. And that might be, you have three different cookie jars you want. Maybe it's only one, maybe it grows into five. You know, it, so we have a really close relationship with certainty. Mm. So maybe dangerous me talking about, but you know what? I'm a transparent guy. I really don't care. 
So we're hoping to have a really a, a deeper relationship with certainty. And as a smaller company with fewer, like, right, we don't have 140 employees. Yeah. Like some of these software companies that are our friends, that are our partners. We've got five in the States, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not big. So like, it's one of those things where I could, I could put all of my energy on a relationship with somebody that we have a close relationship already with, like certainty, but all my energy on that, or I could have six different relationships with other manufacturers and uh, now I'm being spread thin, yeah. right? Now I'm not going to give certainty as much attention and love because I have to give some love to everybody, right? And so for me, it's almost like, hey, why don't you, and I'm not putting all my eggs in a basket, but why don't we really grow this one relationship with this manufacturer so that their territory managers or their sales reps get to know us on a, on a personal level. We get to know them on a personal level. Now, now it's like, Hey, we've seen project. I've been presenting for certainty all over the United States over the last six months. And I've gotten to meet a ton of territory managers. It's been so fruitful. They, they finally know who we are. Right. And they're like, Oh shit, like project map. It's awesome. This is a no brainer. I'm going to yeah. introduce you to five of my contractors tomorrow. It's dope. And it just makes sense. Right. For somebody that's small. And it's kind of one of those, it's kind of like the same analogy, you know, focus your attention, focus your attention on one and it'll be more fruitful than having to focus it on 15. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I'm glad it's working out for you. It is so far. So project map it, we throw it on, throw it on a website and like, this is my take on it. And it's funny because we, we developed a way less sophisticated, we, we developed a way to try to accomplish the same thing in a way yeah. less sophisticated way years before we met. Right. Yep. So, uh, we built a website and we did like a API with Google maps and did like a pinning project where it was just showing the pins. Cause I'm like, I want people to know that if they're looking for this contractor and they're in this area, that they're going to be more comfortable because they've already done work for them. Like we've talked about this. Um, and I mean, it sucked. It was good. It was, it was, it was better bad. than nothing. It was, yeah, it was better than nothing, agreed. but comparatively to like what you guys have available objectively, it failed. Uh, so, Project map is really cool because if we're pushing people, I mean, I've got, I've got clients that use it on every sales call. Their reps, you know, if, if they're out there, they're, they're pulling it up. They have, whether it's in engage or they pull it up on the website, the website yeah. and they know that, Hey, we've done 11 projects within a, you know, a, a half mile radius, a mile radius. It's like, hey, by the way, like you all your neighbors chose us. You could even take that a step further and your neighbors chose us. And you know, this person at this house, look at the review they left for us. Yeah. If you're doing a really good job getting reviews. Um, you, you can follow me for more tips on getting reviews, by the way. But, uh, you know, and you can cross reference yeah. it. And I mean, that just builds such like a, a formidable, impenetrable close with that customer. If everything else in your sales process is dialed in, it's like right. that one thing that could really push them over the top. You're like, it's a really easy decision. You told us we're, we, you see why we're a good company. You told us you understand why we install things the way we do. You told us you understand the value in our warranties that we offer, why we offer them. You told us all these things and the fact that you find value in all the reviews that we have. And, you know, we're showing you that everyone else in your dis neighborhood has made the right choice. You know, you, you want to be the one that yeah. has to worry about the contractor disappearing. I, I don't want that for you. In good conscience, I can't walk out of here without you saying yes or give me a really good reason why we're not your contractor today. Bam. You did a good job there. Would you buy? I would. He'd buy, ladies and gentlemen. Even if, even if you were at a higher price point than the other two mm. contractors that came out to my house, I'd still use you. Social proof is a really important aspect of sales. Nowadays, especially yeah. because the trend of the people that are buying those fixer uppers that are asking for new roofs, new windows, whatever, um, are, are the digital natives, kids, younger people that grew up with iPhones and iPads in their face. They're vetting you. They're looking you up online. They're looking at your Google reviews. Yeah. So now if I give them a tool that shows like, oh, by the way, there were 11 houses. If I just zoomed into my, my neighborhood and I see that, you know, Mike's roofing company did 11 jobs. Yeah. I'm going to pick you. Yeah. Especially if we can show them all the great reviews, reviews we got for with those it. jobs. Yeah. Correct. And so like, what is the, talk to me about the process. If I'm a roofing company, I'm like, you know what? Project map it. Fuck it. Let it rip. We're doing it. How challenging is it? Because if we're, you know, the idea is we can get photos, right, of these completed projects and show them the beautiful siding that we installed, the hardy yeah. siding or, or the, the new shingles that we installed through certain teed. I think it would be a landmark, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, they've got other SKUs. But, you know, we're showing and we're showcasing this. But what is the what is the lift for the contractor to get to that place where all these things are on their website, showing their pictures? I'd imagine it had to be very challenging. No, so since since you are mainly roofing, are you only roofing for 
website marketing? No, yeah, 95%. Mainly 95%. So we'll yeah. talk roofing because we're probably right around the same, right? 90% of our customers are roofers. So it actually can be really easy. In fact, we had a customer the other day we were trying to sell and they're like, well, I think it might take a month. And I said, we can actually get you done in three days because of X, Y, and Z. Because we have what's called an interview. Once we sell them, we talk to them for five minutes just about the strategy of getting them up and running as quickly as possible. Because as a company, like we want our customers to get up. You work with contractors. You know, sometimes contractors don't respond to your emails or texts or anything. They're busy as shit. They're busy as crap, right? They would rather do anything but talk to them, talk to us. Um, so with that said, when I tell a customer like, hey, man, we can get you on board and your map can be embedded on your website in three days. They're like, what? I thought it would take like a month or two. Nope. So we have good partnerships and some pseudo integrations with the, the biggest thing, right? If you, our mapping platform includes three things, reviews, your favorite thing, right? So we can bring in all the Google and Facebook reviews mm -hmm. uh, and showcase them on the map. So reviews, pins on a map and photos. Out of those three things, the hardest is getting the pins on the map because it requires a, an import of a spreadsheet. Or you can manually like add a thousand pins, which nobody's going to do. Yeah. So we started working with companies like ABC Supply and SRS Distribution so far. Uh, and what they can do is we can, when we talk to the roofer, we'll say, where do you order your supplies from? And eight out of 10 times, it's one of those two. Right, ABC and SRS. Okay, we can get that all the deliveries that that SRS or ABC sent that uh, delivered to the houses that you order material from, and, and use that spreadsheet. Mm. You're like, what? Yeah, you just fill out this form. So we can get those spreadsheets pretty easily through ABC or SRS. With those two, we do shingle brand and color, and siding brand and color, and then. Uh, CRMs. We're very familiar with all the different CRMs. You can always export a spreadsheet from a CRM. Yeah. It's not hard. It takes five minutes. And if they give us their login credentials, we can do it for them. And they're like, oh, I just need to give you my login to Aculinks to leap. Okay. Yeah. And we take it, we take it from there. The only thing a CRM doesn't spit out on a spreadsheet is the shingle brand and color. Right. And in our map, which was a little differentiated uh, piece than what you had when you did the maps for your customers is that we have a filter button. So now if a sales rep is looking for that certainty landmark more black, they can click a filter that says, more a black and the map's going to change to only show pins that have more a black roofs. Right. Yeah. And I love that. Uh, as opposed to them lugging around a shingle board, Correct. if you can, but, but a CRM doesn't spit that information out. Right. CRMs, you know, they only spit out like it was a roof job or a siding job or well, plus, you know, I found, and we talked about this in the past, I found the more that I can take off of your plate as the contractor, the, the less anxious I am, the better I feel because you guys get busy and you might not be the best at responding to emails and it's okay. Nobody's expecting anyone to be perfect here. So if we can bypass the need for someone at yep. your company to be responsible for a b c or all the above let's do that let's go directly to the manufacturer they have all the information we need and they have more information than what Correct. we would get from you exporting it from the crm Correct. that's a brilliant workaround to be incredibly efficient and make it as easy as possible for the contractors to to utilize the the product effectively so that gets the spreadsheet taken care of right mm -hmm. we can handle the spreadsheet yep. that's not as hard as you thought it was mr and mrs roofer yep Second thing, photos. We have a direct integration with Company Cam. Again, we know how to get into any CRM and download a photo and then upload it to Project Map It. So what our company will do is we'll spend <coughs> two hours free service to load photos. We'll connect if you're using Company Cam, which like seven out of 10 people are always on Company mm -hmm. Cam. So they give us access to Company Cam. We'll connect Company Cam to Project Map It. We'll spend two hours loading photos for them. Or if they give us access to their CRM, we'll spend, somebody just gave me a ton of, uh, iCloud photos yeah. by address. So we'll spend two hours loading photos. So that takes care of the second piece. And and syncing your Google reviews literally takes five minutes. You log into your Google business profile and boom, they come in. Yeah. So to get onboarded is actually very simple. Mm. You heard it. Give them a call. It's it easy peasy. Very simple. Yeah. I like I said, I have I have customers that use Project Map It and their sales team are consistently referencing whether, like I said, they implement into an engage uh, pitch stack or they just use the website. It's uh it's a game changer and I appreciate what you do and I appreciate you coming here and dropping some knowledge and sharing some experience with us, man. That's uh that's incredible. Before we wrap this thing up, you have anything you want to ask me? No oh, man. Nothing? What what process in your company I always like to ask this, you know, you being the the leader of your company, which I know you have multiple leaders, but for people that are still growing like myself 
and like you, Mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice would you give other business leaders or entrepreneurs when it comes to building your team? <clears throat> so I'll give a disclaimer that I don't think that, you know, I'm the most qualified to give the best advice on this because I'm still a young entrepreneur myself. Um, so I think what have you learned? I've learned that it's, I would much rather turn away opportunities in the event that we will have challenges fulfilling that and losing out on those opportunities and taking the time that I need to get the right people in the right seats that I'm confident are going to consistently do the job the way that I want it done, the way our customers expect to have it done, than to hire somebody to fulfill a need based on us signing somebody and not having the means to fulfill it. Um, I'm very... I'm very hyper-focused on that. We've had several instances where we've shut down sales and we had to turn people away. Shout out to Eric Reno. He was one of them. He can attest to it. He reached out to me like a year and a half, two years ago. And I'm like, we're not in the position to help you. I gave him some, some guidance as far as how I would make the decision to choose somebody else. And it came full circle. And eventually we were able to, to connect and do business, but we, we weren't in the position uh, from a human capital perspective to invest what we would need to, to give him the best quality of service that people come to expect from a send. So for me, that's the biggest thing is, you know, it's, it's okay. We talked about it in another piece of content we shot. Not every customer is your customer. Even the customers that are, the timing's not always right. Yeah. And uh, if that's the case, like hire in anticipation of the need, if you can, if not, it's okay. If you're booked out four weeks on production and you're going to start losing opportunities because of it, it's okay to take a step back um, and take a look at like, how do we, how do we create a situation where we could still sell more in the future, but not be bottlenecked on production to where we're overworking? Because that's another thing, right? That's putting stress on all your current team members when right. you, they're overworked and there's just there's too much food on the plate. Yeah, it's you know in theory as a business owner it's a good spot to be because revenues revenues loaded up and you've got opportunities coming in, but also it you know it can cause some significant issues with your employees internally because you're asking them to pick up the slack of. And then on top effect, of what they're already doing your customers too. It's, oh yeah. 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 Usually, usually at some point it'll lead to dissatisfaction from right. the customers because you know, may, you know, the first things to go are like typically like quality control, right? right? Like we don't have, we usually have a project manager at every job site, you know, that comes by a couple times a day. He only made it there once during the, the two day install. Right. I mean, look at Boeing. They were the first ones to cut quality control. We might want to cut that. I don't know. We might be able to run with it. Though. I got, you know, what do I know? You know, quality control is really important, especially when you're flying 40,000 feet in the air. Uh, so that's one thing that I would say has, has been important to us. And it's really been a focal point for me as we continue to grow is making sure that we have the resources, the folks within the company aren't overworked to a point where they hate their fucking life because yeah. that's not good for anybody. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I've learned we, we really, and I, and I've, I feel like I've always learned this or always felt this way, but I learned, I think, through my interactions when I hired Pat, because yeah. I noticed Pat's email stunk. And I like, I wanted to get mad because that's not my kind of email that I would write. Like we, we provide good customer service and I didn't get mad. And Pat shared with me his issues with dyslexia and stuff like that. And we came up with a solution. So for us, it's, you know, we pride ourselves on helping each other out. Right. Like if there's, we just, you know, Ashley uh, just went on maternity leave. Yeah. Just had a baby girl yesterday. I was Shout talking out. to Pete this morning. Shout out to yeah. Dawson. Yep. Yeah. I've been texting with Pete a little bit here and there. So um, we're down a person, right? So we're all, we all know that we're picking up the slack. We aren't going to try to kill it on leads. Like I know that sounds horrible, but we don't want to over, we don't want to overextend ourselves where we can't give customer the customer experience they deserve as well. But being a lifelong <sighs> learner, man, like, you're going to be, you're like, as a leader, your employees are going to fail. And Ty Backer always says it, put people in uncomfortable situations so they become comfortable, right? So, you know, brand new guy, Eric started in March. He's like, he, t- like today he got his first, we Perla sold somebody and he's in charge of onboarding that person with Perla support, but he's going to be crapping himself, right? Like he's yeah. nervous as crap, but that's okay. We want you to be nervous. We want you to be a lifelong learner and it's okay if you mess up. That's our big thing. Yeah. And I appreciate that perspective. You know, I had somebody that reached out this morning. He submitted a form about a week and a half ago 
to have us do like a, a discovery call intro yeah. call. And he submitted it again today and I called him. I'm like, look, man, I'm really sorry, you know, for the delay. You know, we typically try to be expeditious with getting out, you know, speed to lead type deal. Yep. I think it's important. People feel it valued is. when you respond to them. And I didn't even acknowledge the first one. Right. And that's, yeah. that's my bad, but I communicated, I, I expressed, uh, I said, as much as we love growth and opportunities to work with new people, like our allegiance and our f- main focus is on our primary clients that yeah. our clients and customers of ours. I said, so it's been a fucking couple weeks and that's not an excuse. That doesn't excuse me not acknowledging you or getting back yeah. to you, but I just want to set the stage that like, you know, we'll, we'll be very cognizant of not yeah. letting that happen again. And I am sincerely apologetic about it. He's like, dude, it's all good. I, cool. And I can appreciate that as somebody who wants to be a customer of yours. So he's not going to be a customer of yours. He is going to be a customer. He is. Yep. Cool. He was just saying he could appreciate that because while he's not a customer now, that that little the, bit is going to make focus him a lifelong on, customer. Right. Exactly. 100%. Right. Because then when he's on the other side of it, and he is a customer. He knows that I'm. We're not going to you know skirt cor- cut corners or skirt out on his campaign to make sure we're higher. You know. And, and if you signing take, new clients, if you take care of your customers, your customers go nowhere. I had a customer the other day. He was charged for his yearly. Email me, why the hell am I getting charged? I didn't approve this. And I said, we're too big now where like we can't get your permission verbally. You get you get an email saying you're going to be charged. You know that you're going to be charged. If you don't, you should know your annual. I said, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll refund you right away. Yeah. His comment back right away within five minutes. You know what, Steve? You've always been good to me. I want to see you be successful. Just keep us for another year. You guys are good. And, I, and I, know, I know a couple of my salespeople um, are using you for sure. So, you know, you build those relationships and honestly, man, we, we joke, we didn't joke about it, but because I think it's true. Like there are two things when we talk to people, whether it's on a lead or a training, the first thing we always say on a, on a phone conversation or a demo is, do you have a hard stop or I respect your time? Do you have a minute to chat right now? And we want to make sure we're saying the person's name, right? I know it sounds funny, but it goes so far and we do not, we are not pressure sales. We don't pressure it's like, hey, if you see value in Project Map, it awesome. We're here for you when you're ready to start. If you do, if you don't see it, that's fine too. There's a hundred thousand contractors out there. We'll be okay. Be okay. A lot of times that actually that rever- it, it's not reverse psychology on pur- purpose, but a lot of times that you know people will really truly appreciate it and want to do business with you because of that attitude. Follow him for more sales training. Well, that's all the time we got for today, folks. I am very grateful for you coming out, making the the trek up to Buffalo. Hopefully it's everything you hope for and so much more. And, uh, you know, take a look for that basketball content because it's coming. Uh, Hey, I I promise you, it's going to be 15 nothing you, but that's okay. And we gone. Five, four, three, two, one, zero.